Hello everyone out there, I have got on my heart to do a video here that is going to provoke many, it's going to challenge many, but I believe it's going to be an eye-opener for many people. I'm going to warn against our idol many, many believers are worshipping nowadays. The biggest idolatry I see in the churches right now have to do with the worship of the New Testamently God. I don't believe there is a New Testamently God. That is idol worship. That is idolatry to go in and worship the New Testamently God. And what, I, what I'm trying to say is that there is only one God. There is not the Old Testament God. There is a God of wrath or anger. And then the New Testamently God, there is a God of grace and love. But this is what I'm seeing today all over the world. That when people talk about God, their picture of God, the idea of who God is, is that that God they are worshiping, that God they now believe in, is different from the God we read about in the Old Testament, where that was a God of wrath and anger and he killed people. But now, no, no, God is not like that. Our God is a God of love and, and grace. And he sent his son Jesus because he loved the world so much. And suddenly we end up with a New Testamently God that's very different from the Old Testamently. God. I call that idolatry. Because there is only one God. And if the God you are worshiping is the God you believe in, is different from the Old Testament, you have broken God's command and you have created your own God. And that is idolatry. And I want to start here in uh, Exodus 20 when Moses came down with the commandment. He said, one of the first commandments was, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not have, and you shall have no other gods before me. God, he starts here and say, I am God, the Lord your God. And then he said, who brought you out? out of the land of Egypt. So God brought his people out of the land of Egypt. That God who killed the firstborn in Egypt, that God who came with the flies, who came with water to, water, to blood, who came with the, the curses over the people of Egypt, this is the God we worship. And God, he defines who he is. He said, I am that God who brought you out of Egypt. Therefore, if you today believe in a God that's different than what we read in the Old Testament, you have broken the command of God. Because he also said, you shall not make for yourself a graven image. And then he talked about that we should not create change and make a picture of God and worship him. But is that not what we are doing today? Maybe we are not physically created our image of stone and gold or wood and worshiping that. But what I see today is that we in our head have created our graven image of God. We have created an idol in our head that we today are worshiping. We are today worshiping the New Testament God, a God of grace, a God of love. There is not like the God who brought them out of Egypt, who are not like the God who killed a lot of people in the Old Testament, who are not like a God who was anger, angry and have wrath like we read there. No, our God, the God we now believe in, is so tolerant, is so loving, is so different. What have you done? You have just broken the first two of the Ten Commandments. You have created your own God in your own imagination. A God that suits you. A God 
they suit what you think God should be like. And, and that I'm seeing that all over the world today. I'm, I'm hearing that in preaching. I'm seeing that on the internet. That, that people have a wrong idea of who God is. Like, oh, the New Testament God we love. God has not changed. If, if, if you don't, if you have problem with the Old Testament, have problem with how God dealt with people at that time, you have fallen in sin here. You have created your own image of God, a God who suits you. Yeah, maybe you call him God, but this is actually what they did with Moses because Moses went to the mountain again and he came down and they have created a, a gold little gold, uh, calf, the golden calf and they were worshipping that golden calf. They did not call that golden calf, oh, here is Baal or here is Krishna or here is Allah or here is that God. No, they said, here is God, our God, God I am. Here is our God who brought us out of Egypt. So what did they do there? They did not go and worship other gods and call them other names, but they changed the image of God from being the one true God to now being a golden calf. And what do we do today? We change the image of God to be the one true God we read about in the Bible, to be like a granny, papa, God who's sitting on the cloud, who's just lovey, lovey, lovey. God is merciful, but God was also merciful in the Old Testament. God is merciful in the New Testament. God was a God of wrath in the Old Testament, but God is also a God of wrath in the New Testament. God was a consuming fire. We read that in the Old Testament, but God is also a consuming fire in the New Testament. Why? Because God has not changed. There is only one true God, the God who brought them out of Egypt. And remember when the early Christian was preaching about God, their Bible was the Old Testament. There is only one true God. And we often quote John 3, 16 so many times, but God loved the world that he gave his only son for whoever believed in him shall not perish but have it everlasting life. And we know that. We believe in that. And here we see God's love. Yeah. But the same chapter, this last verse, whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. The wrath of God. Jesus came to save us from the wrath of God. And, and it was not only in the Old Testament people got killed by God. In New Testament, chapter 5, book of Acts 5, Ananias, Sapphire, the, the, the sin against God, the God of grace, the spirit of grace. And they got killed by angel, came and, and they both died. And we read a big fear of God came upon the people. Herodes, Her, Herod, sorry, Herod, in uh, Acts 12, he got aided by wormed, worms when he took the glory of God. Here we have just two examples in Book of Acts, where people got killed by God. That is the New Testament. That is after the cross. And just because we are in a place, and maybe you are in a place where you don't see the anger of God and, and, and think now it's just merciful, 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 it don't mean that there is no anger anymore. Try to read how it ends. If you go to Revelation and go there to chapter 6, we read in Revelation 6 that people in the end time will cry out to the mountains and the rocks to fall on them and hide them for the wrath of the Lamb. Jesus came first time to save the people. He's going to come next time with his fire and there's going to be judgment day. And the wrath of God the wrath of Jesus. See that in Revelation 6. God is a consuming fire. And when I said our God is a consuming fire, I'm not quoting Old Testament right now. I'm actually quoting Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. God, our God is a consuming fire. Our God is also love, like he was in the Old Testament. Our God is also a God of grace, like he was in the Old Testament. 
because there is only one true God. And that is the God we read about in the Bible, in the whole Bible, not only in the New Testament. Yes, we are living in the New Covenant, and there is uh, Jesus now, and there is forgiveness from the wrath of God and, and our sins. But those people who are not in Christ, the wrath of God is still over them, and judgment day is still going to come, and we cannot play with God because he is still today a consuming fire. So I want to do this video to warn against the New Testament God people are worshipping nowadays. Maybe it's not a God of stones and gold. They are creating like an idol like that. But they are creating an idol where? In their own head. My God is not like that. No, my God is like that. My God is like that. And nowadays we can have 10 Christians lined up on a long list uh, beside each other and we ask, how is your God? And everyone say, my God is like this, and my God like this, and my God like this. And you get 10 different ideas or 10 different gods. And this is the biggest idol worship we are seeing today and is happening in front of us in the churches. If you have problem with reading the Old Testament, if you have problem with what God did there, you have created your own God. And you also actually have problem with many things in the New Testament with what I said, Ananias, Sapphire, Herod, with Judgment Day, and some of the things we read there. Because God is the same forever. There's only one true God, and this is the one we are supposed to worship. So I hope this video will make some sense and, and will speak to you. Try to, try to see it when people talk. Try to see it that some people have so much difficulty when we talk about God that is holy, God that is judging people, God that is killing people, God that is doing things. Why do they have problem with it? Because the God we are being presented nowadays is the New Testament testamentally God, the God of love, the God of grace, the God of that, like he was not that in the Old Testament. We end up this video saying that the uh, Gospel of John say that uh, the eternal life is to know him, the one true God, and him he sent, Jesus Christ. The eternal life is to know him, it's about relationship. And when you seek him, See God, you find out that He is a loving God. He's a graceful God. He's a merciful God today. And He was that in the Old Testament, and He will always be, be that. You also find out that He is holy, He is righteous today, as He have always been. You find out that God is forever the same. Yes, we are living in a new covenant. Yes, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ when we are in Him. Uh, but we need to know God and need to preach the full gospel that God is forever the same. So we worship him. God bless you. Bye-bye.